We also need to demand more of our elected leaders. We need to stand up and protect the Clean Air Act and the application of science to protect public health through that law. More than 120 million Americans right now live in counties that exceed the Clean Air Act legal limit for safe levels of ozone air pollution. And what the research has found from China, from Europe, and from right here in the United States is that areas with higher levels of air pollution are experiencing disproportionately high mortality rates from the coronavirus. It's not just an urban problem. We see in rural counties in Louisiana, for example, the same link between hazardous air pollution and high mortality rates from the coronavirus. The first is particulate matter, or PM2.5. These are microscopic particles, about 30 times smaller than the width of a human hair. They're so small, we can't see them, but they can penetrate deep into our lungs enter our bloodstream and damage nearly every organ system in the body. PM2.5 air pollution is deadly. And then the second air pollution that, pollutant that we're concerned about from a health perspective is ozone smog. Ozone air pollution actually forms in the atmosphere through the combination of a number of building blocks, which are also linked to fossil fuels. What we're seeing right now is that EPA, just in the last couple of months, has proposed to leave the existing limits for PM2.5 deadly fine particle air pollution and ozone air pollution right where they are, instead of strengthening them. As a scientist, that doesn't make sense. At the same time, the Trump administration has proposed basically a weakening of clean air protections when it comes to the emissions allowed from various sources including automobiles, coal-fired power plants, and fossil fuel extraction activities. We need to recognize that when we take steps to reduce air pollution, like reducing short car trips, or making sure that we're not wasting energy, or making sure that we're using energy efficient appliances in our apartments and our homes, that those actions can achieve really near-term benefits right here, right now, for our health, for reduced costs and spending on healthcare, and also helping to address the climate crisis in the long run.